Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. I'm Mr. TIG. Now, today we're on site at a guy's shop by the name of Larry Barnes, and we're actually fabricating an airboat. And in a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to Larry and describe some of the features of the boat. Now, this isn't a normal airboat. You're probably used to seeing boats that uh, come from Florida, do the, uh, do the swamp thing. Uh, but this area has a uh, kind of a sandy beach river and it has logs floating in it and everything else. So you're going to see some, uh, some different features of an airboat. Uh, for instance, this one's a pretty heavy duty one. But the, uh, the frame that we're, that we're manufacturing right now is a 6061 aluminum tubing. Now, most of it's tubing, but you're going to notice that we have a pretty heavy duty engine here. So the engine mount itself is made out of aluminum pipe. Uh, now the fit-ups on here are pretty normal except with a few that are uh, a little bit too large and we're going to show you what you can do with some of the gaps in the fit-ups here. So stay tuned and uh, we'll show you some features. Okay, on this particular airboat, I'm in a section called the pancake section. That's where uh, the rotor blades rotate. And this frame has been semi-tacked, some welding done to it. There's an awful lot of welding left to do. But I want to show you my setup. Now, this is what Larry happens to have here. And I'm kind of proud of him because he got the right stuff. He got a, uh, a 17 flex torch. This is a CK17 flex head torch. And you know you really need that to get into some of the angles. So you're constantly changing the angles, making a short weld, and then readjusting. So this feature is absolutely handy. Now I'm using a filler material. It's 4043 material and it's a 332 diameter. Now here's what the intent. When this frame is finished, it's going to get some kind of a special blast to it. and It's going to give it a certain grit pattern and then it's going to get clear coated. So we're not worried about anodized because 4043 anodized is kind of funny. So just, just know that going in. Now I've got two welds side by side and the fit ups are different, totally different. I have one that's absolutely an excellent fit up. I have one that's absolutely near horrible. Yeah, so that unfortunately is what you have to deal with out in the field. So spend the time that you can on fit up. It'll make life a lot easier. Now the power supply that I have behind me happens to be one of the most successful power supplies in Lincoln Electric history. It's called a Square Wave 175 and this was the Pro Edition. So uh, this thing has been around for a few years. It's tried and true. It has been proven and tested well. So it has enough amperage to handle everything that we do here. It'll go up to 175 amps. Most of the welding that I'm going to do is somewhere around 125 amps. So uh, I did go ahead and I put a stubby gas lens to make this a little bit shorter to work with. I like the gas flow coming out of the stubby gas lens. Uh, so this is the perfect setup. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make weld number one. Now this is a tight fit, so it, it makes it so much easier and it's only going to take me about 30 seconds to do this weld. As expected, it, it wetted out very nicely. The gap was very little, so I didn't have to weave my puddle at all. Okay, so I normally recommend not having to weave until you get into this type of joint right here. And because of the gap, you're going to have to weave left, right, left, right, just to catch the edges. And overall, it'll look okay. It'll look pretty good when I finish. It just makes it more difficult to weld. So uh, let, let's see how this weave pattern works.
Okay, so uh, the two of them welded up just fine. I'm going to get a, uh, a zoom in on here so you can compare the left to the right. But overall, they, they look similar. One's a little bit wider, a little bit flatter, but uh, still a good weld. And we're going to move on and we're going to show you a couple of different types of configurations of welds. Now, th these I happen to do vertical up, but when you get into a fixed uh, part like this, you got to learn to weld vertical up, left to right, overhead, in every position. And the nice thing about TIG is once you get out of position, you have a foot control, back off of your foot control very slowly and you can reposition. You only have to weld little quarter inch wells at a time if that's all you can reach. So uh, we're going to reset up and I'm going to do another part of this frame. Okay, now we've moved to the front of the cage a little bit and if you'll notice this really is part of the motor mount. Now what's important about that is that we have pretty significant gussets because this engine is going to try to tweak and it's got a lot of torque to it. So instead of using 125 thousandths well, we've gone to schedule 41 inch pipe. Uh, so pretty, pretty thick material. The, the gusset type materials that we use are quarter inch plate. So uh, I'm using a machine that goes to 175 amps and I'll be using just about the maximum the machine will put out. But I can actually build this entire boat and anything on it with the same machine. So uh, I'm going to do a vertical up. This is actually a very good fit. JR, I know you fit this one, so I know you know how to do it. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weld here, and then I'm going to weld on the opposing side. And in the beginning, it takes a little while. I've got a lot of mass here. So you'll see me kind of hesitate at the beginning of the weld just to get some heat into the part. So here goes. Okay, this area right here that I'm pointing at, it's very significant that I get the well wrapped around because that's a, an immediate stress riser. Okay, now I, uh, I took my time in that little wrap around. So as I added filler, I let it build up. And then when I pulled out of the puddle, I did it very, very slow because I just didn't want a crater crack to form. And I didn't want uh, that hot short cracking that we've been talking about. And most of the time, I'm going to be doing vertical up in this position, especially when you get into thicker materials. Vertical up is a good thing because you get better penetration. Well, you, you can see that this motor mount is actually pretty significant, and we're still going to put more gussets in. Uh, one thing that's really important, we already talked about the engine having a torque. Uh, it, it's left to right, but forward to aft is actually going to have more torque. By the time he puts all the fan blades on here and gets some pretty high RPM, we have to put in gussets of this, of this size and, and thickness. And so you can see we have significant welds. So just in case the driver decides that he's going to utilize all the horsepower, we don't want the engine thrusting forward. Um, so we'll put gussets here. We'll also put some more gussets before it's all said and done. Well, as I'd mentioned, we're in the shop with Larry Barnes, the owner of this airboat. And this is the first part of a two series. Now, Larry, I got a couple of questions to ask you. This style of airboating is a little bit different than down in Florida. And we're actually gonna go down to Florida and, and interview the guys down there. This is a, a, a different type of hull. Is this like a fiberglass hull? This is a fiberglass hull. Okay. And I think they usually, I use mostly aluminum there. 
in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah. Okay, you got fiberglass, but I also noticed that underneath you've got some kind of a, a, a protectant, like a plastic or... It's a polymer. It's 5 sixteenths inch thick, and uh, it protects the bottom of the boat from, from sand and objects in the water. So we have a lot of objects in the water here at well, Arkansas let's, River. Okay, I, I, I remember seeing an awful lot of logs and things coming down the river, but tell me a little more about this sand. How do you how do you end up on top of the sand? Uh, mostly by the right right foot pushing the gas. <laughs> okay, so you do it on purpose, in other words. Absolutely. All right. Now, <clears throat> because you're pushing this up on the sand, doesn't that take quite a bit of horsepower? Because this looks like a pretty heavy boat. I think the boat uh, is fairly heavy compared to a lot of the aluminum boats, and <clears throat> I think I have adequate horsepower to to get it on the sand. Well, I, I know that you've been in the airboat uh, trade for a little while, just for your own personal use, but uh, I remember you had one engine that seemed to be pretty powerful and it did the job, and then a second engine. Uh, this one here is new to me. So uh, what, what engine did you put on this? This is a new uh, LSX 454 Chevrolet engine, and it uh, has a supercharger on top of it. It runs on uh, pump fuel. It uh, produces about 875 horse on the dyno and 765 foot-pounds of torque so at uh, so 500 you, RPM. So are you, are you telling me that the NASCAR boys would like to have this in their car? Uh, I think they might like it. I don't know if it lasts for 500 miles, mm -hmm. but I think they'd like it for a while. What, what, what kind of fuel do you burn? Uh, just regular pump gas from the service station, uh, 91 octane. Okay, I notice there's a tank over here. It's already pre-painted, powder-coated. Uh, looks great. How many gallons? 41 gallon. 41 gallons. All right, so <clears throat> you're going to have to take this out and test it to find out how many gallons per hour you use. Absolutely. All right. Well, this is pretty fantastic, and uh, I can't wait for you to see part two of this. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.